where we try to understand the scope, the reach, and the meaning of stabilization. As you all have practiced it in so many different countries, it has different interpretations in different contexts. But for us as the Somali government, stabilization is akin to liberation, and it's about the expanding the reach, the scope, and the penetration capabilities of the Somali state institutions to enhance state legitimacy. So it has a security, a state legitimacy, cohesion, governance implications for us. It is going to be that link. I don't want to make my remarks very long uh, here today. We have had so many meetings where we spoke about humanitarian crisis, where we spoke about uh, climate change, where we spoke about development policy. But all those other issues would remain unresolved if the nation is not liberated from al-Shabaab and if stabilization is not followed up with it. So this is the anchor. Our efforts in the military front and the stabilization front is going to be the anchor on which all other policies are going to be built on. So we want to attach that importance on it. We have not only the Minister of Interior, but the Minister of Justice, Minister of Women and Human Rights, Health, uh, Planning, Water, uh, Disaster Management, National Security, and of course, Defense. So stabilization would be following on the gains made in the military front. Ladies and gentlemen, for us, as would be uh, presented, Stabilization used to be a very limited approach in practice in Somalia before. I used to work at the Ministry of Interior, and we have had a very long number of partners who have been providing very useful support in our stabilization efforts in the various operations that have been carried out. But what has changed over the years is what I want to highlight. I want to focus only on the macro level issues. A year and a half ago, or even less than that, or maybe two years ago, as we got into a prolonged electoral process, the possibility of Somali Arab forces and communities uh, trying to recover places in Hiran, in Galgudud, in Shabele, in Muduk, in parts of Southwest, in Jubalan, from Yed to Mataban, from Wabha to Qayat, from uh, all these locations were beyond our imagination. So a new mindset and a new down is to be noticed here in Somalia, where the government, with its more powerful weapon, which is its people, the citizens of this country, are working hand in hand to get rid of themselves of this very chronic issue, which is al-Shabaab. And mind you, the young boy or girl that was 10 years old when al-Shabaab came into the picture is now at least 25 years old. The one that was five years old is potentially in the front lines fighting on their uh, side, carrying a very radical idea. So it's only now that we are actually coming to appreciate the level of penetration they have had on society. Therefore, as we recovered, and I think the, the, the ministry would highlight on our observations on, in here and so far, as we recover new areas and the armed forces with the local communities take on new areas, we're coming to realize that the wells are being destroyed. And prior to that, the mindset of the youth and the public in these locations has been changed. There are no proper schools. They are not even teaching proper Islamic an ideology, they're teaching a very wrong one that kills people while Islam is supposed to uh, promote peace and coexistence. There are no social services. So the question is, as we recover land and try to enhance the legitimacy of the Somali state institutions at the federal level and the federal government, what are we trying to do? I would like to give you the key tenets of what we think, I mean, rationally and policy-wise, what stabilization should entail. For us, stabilization entails that the Somali government actors at the national level and subnational level are able to keep peace and provide basic security through, mili uh, through not military, but through police 
to the, to the, to the, to the populations that are uh, recovered from Al-Shabaab. Secondly, it's about the provision of justice. Because one of the key tools that this radical group, they use through inhumane and coercive power is they claim to provide justice to people. But only justice that involves killing people. So for us, as the Minister of Justice is, is here, we must come up with relevant approach and a culturally and, and Islamically uh, inclined approach to the provision of justice to the people in any form of conflict or dispute that can occur. It is going to be based on our religion and on our customs and respecting uh, international norms. That is some of the serious discussions we are having in that front. And more importantly, much of this activity is going to be anchored on the work that the Minister of Interior is going to do. They are already doing good work on reconciliation. They are doing good work in uh, deepening federalism, the formation of administrative structures. So it is governance, it is justice, it is security, and it is about the provision of basic services. I'll give you just a few simple examples. As hundreds of kilometers was recovered in Iran, and Al-Shabaab destroyed the wells and the basic livelihoods of people, we had to sit together and try to come up with how to support people, provide ambulances, rebuild uh, municipalities, health posts. We realized that then this is a very complex approach that needs a total government intervention. And we were glad that with the Minister of Water and others, we were able to provide some initial support. But we learned from that experience that if we are going to go to Jilib a few months from now, or days, whatever it may take, if we are going to recover Aden Yabal, if we are going to recover Elbur, if we are going to recover um, these places that have been under Al-Shabaab for so long, we ought to be prepared and must have the resources that will follow the military. What helps us attain holding power is legitimacy and provision of basic services. So it is this livelihoods has to be another aspect of stabilization. Not necessarily giving job to everybody, but allowing people to have a source of income generation and invigorating the marketplace for each locality. So all I want to emphasize is our thinking of stabilization has evolved due to the magnitude and the scope of the libera liberation that we are undertaking now. It is, as I was discussing with the ministry earlier, from the outskirts of Galkaia all the way to Kismaya, other than big cities like Mogadishu, Baidabo, Adado, Dusa Marreb, Kismaya. But we are neglecting the countryside, we are neglecting the small villages, and that is where the people live. So this is a huge project. Of course, we may not be in a situation and a context like the kind of stabilization that was provided to, to Afghanistan when 77 states got together and, and supported them full hand. I mean, uh, Iraq, or maybe in Afghanistan prior to that. So we are very cognizant of how stabilization has unfolded in other post-conflict societies. We are not asking for the moon, nor are we settling for the stars. In this case, we want to come up with something that is able to save the lives of our people and help them to switch their allegiance uh, and, and affiliation to the side of the government. The details, the technicalities, the scope, uh, the distance that are being covered, and, and, and the good news that we are making. And I think uh, we are underselling that, actually. It is a total shift in the thinking of the Somali government and in the thinking of the Somali public, and hopefully, as we see every day, in the thinking of our partners, that this time it is possible. It is possible to get rid of Al-Shabaab from Somalia, which is a threat to the Somali people and the region and the globe at large. We are relying on your support, a support that would be on the basis of our strategy, of, on our priorities, and our understanding of our context. As you can see the representation here, this is going to be a cross-cutting issue. It will begin with the Minister of Defense, giving us the scope and, and, and the sequences of recovered areas, and then the other ministries would get in. 
with the Ministry of Interior being at the center. But the policy, strategic direction of this is going to be carried out at the office of the Prime Minister. And I will be personally chairing these things and overseeing it. Both the President and the Prime Minister have very specific and clear views about the stabilization. We have had a lot of discussions and they want us to ensure that as we recover new, new spaces and places, we end up providing health posts, schools, and whatnot. That is the trust, and in the trust and, uh, and, 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 and the support of the Somali public who are doing a tremendous job, I will keep them, I would like to keep my remarks at that and thank the Minister of Interior for playing a leadership role and the other line ministries for understanding the collective nature of this task and the collaboration needed. I would like to thank you very much. And after I hear to your remarks, maybe we can, we can forge agreements on the way forward. It's a very good beginning. Thank you very much. Alfred.